Thompson, where are you originally from? <clears throat> I'm, the, uh, I'm from northern Manitoba, mm -hmm. uh, but a very special place in northern Manitoba, uh, where uh, people always think of Churchill when they think of northern Manitoba, but that's, I'm on the other side. I'm 15 kilometers from the Saskatchewan border and right under Nunavut, right that corner of Manitoba. I was practically conceived in Nunavut and born in Manitoba. That's how close it was. And there's nothing up there. There was no, I mean, there was no human habitation up there. It's a land of 10,000 lakes at least. And uh, lakes and rivers, and it's a paradise. It's paradise. And nobody has ever seen it except us, because it's, in, it's, in, it's inaccessible. And only those of us who come from there know it. I've seen it. So it's still the world's, the be, in my opinion, the world's best kept secret. Nobody's ever seen it, and nobody ever will. Wow. Yeah, it's just wow. be, beautiful beyond compare. My father was like the, the king of this, this immense territory. Our next neighbor was, what, 200 kilometers away? Northern Canada is vast, eh? And uh, so we were, he was like the king of this estate. And we would grow up his princes. And wow. that's how I grew up. I grew up the son of a king. I had, I had a charmed life. And yeah. you're making him very proud. Oh, I am. Well, that's, I, that's what motivates me, mm -hmm. More, you know, mostly, is that he worked so hard to put me, to send me to school. He never went to school, didn't spend a day in school or uh, for a single day. And yet, he, and yet he spoke four languages, four native languages. Uh, up there, there's Inuit as well. And, um, and, uh, and, he, and so he was determined that he would send his, 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 two, his two, especially his two younger sons, there were 12 of us, I'm the 11th, mm -hmm. to, to, to get the education that he never got, to realize the dreams that he never achieved eh, mm -hmm. because of that handicap. So he wanted us to put us out on, that, on, that, on a bush plane, the nearest school, 600 kilometers, 600 kilometers away, so, and he wanted us to go out there and get the kind of life that he dr had always dreamt about, mm -hmm. and now I have it. I lived exactly the way he wanted to live, and I feel I'm living out his dreams. I, 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 I've always worked twice as hard. Uh, for, I've gone to school for two people, for my father and for me, so I've always worked twice as hard as everybody else, and the results I've achieved have been, have been twice as good as everybody else's. The equation is obvious. Yeah. Yeah. Do you yeah. think joy is part of your success overall? Absolutely. My younger brother, there were uh, there were 12, 12 of us. I said, my younger, the young, I'm the 11th. The youngest one passed, died when, at the age of 35 of AIDS, uh, back in the 1990. I remember. And during the height of the of the, uh, the epidemic, and so we lost him at that point in time. And the last thing, and it's a very slow moving, slowly slow progressing disease, and you go under, and for the last two weeks you're comatose, and then you die uh, and then but the last thing he said before he slipped under was don't mourn me from his hospital bed don't mourn me be joyful okay and so now i have to be joyful for two people for myself yeah. and for him which is why when you walk into a room and you see somebody who's having twice as good a time as anybody else that's me okay <laughs> that's one thing and the other thing is that uh, i believe uh, i have many many hot little philosophy many philosophies and many many of them are very hot and i'll give you one of them and that is living in the past, and this is having learned it from, from experience. Living in the past is a surefire recipe for failure and misery. Par contre, uh, living in the future, the present and the future is a surefire recipe for success and happiness. Mm. And, I, and I choose the latter. It's a conscious choice. I, I have a very limited amount of time left on the planet, and I intend to, to laugh my way through it. <laughs> and I do. I laugh about you. And that's another one of my hot little philosophies. Okay. If you haven't laughed 100 times in one day, you haven't lived that day. Does our rich culture, does that help to strengthen us as a people, our democracy? Are they connected? Having worked for in so native social work for seven years from age 23 to age 30, which is when I started writing in earnest, uh, I, I saw I mean, a community that was across the country, and I'm part of that community myself. Uh, in, in trouble, in uh, pain, there were certain things. There were certain things that weren't right, and the, and, the, and what was not right was their spirit was their spirit was hurting. Mm -hmm. Their spirit was not in the right place. It had been displaced. It had been misplaced. Whatever. But so that was the first thing that had to be repaired, to, to go to the very very base of the of, the, of the, the the social life of that the spiritual life of that community, and the only way to heal a community spiritually and emotionally is through art, you know, and. Uh, so I decided to take that approach to my social work. So to this very day, I'm no, I'm not an, I don't think of myself as an artist, mm -hmm. even if I'm playing on the piano on stage in a fabulous cab at Kerner Hall, for instance, I've done that, mm -hmm. and in many other halls like that. Um, I always, I'm still a social worker. I'm mm -hmm. still healing communities. I'm still here making that audience in that, in that place happy, 
and you know, and at, in, in, uh, at peace with themselves. Mm. And uh, you know, like st artists are uh, <clears throat> doctors too. It's just that we don't. We, the difference between medical doctors and, and artists is that doctors work with the disease after it's too late, after the disease has set in, and they work with the body, the physical ailment. Artists work with the spiritual ailment of that of that body, but only but way before the illness takes place. Mm. So that's where that's what we are. We're doctors. We're spiritual doctors. We're medicine people. We're shaman. You know, that's where the word shaman comes from.